Oh, this is going to be fun because I love history. So I want to introduce to you Amy Durbin from the New Haven Museum and Jessica Mack from the Broken Umbrella Theater. Now, what are you two doing together? Well, we're going to talk about the telephone and its start in New Haven, Connecticut. You guys have put together a collaboration. I'm going to let uh, you start, Amy. What, what are the two of you doing together? Well, actually, I think Jess is better able to Oh, she's that yielding question. already, Jessica. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, all right. So um, what we're doing, what Broken Umbrella Theater is doing is taking a, a nugget based in history of New Haven, which is always vast, and uh, this nugget that we've chosen this time is the first telephone switchboard and commercial exchange, which took place in New Haven. From that nugget, we sort of have built on this idea of exchange and what does that mean and how interesting it would be to get people's exchanges from inside the New Haven community. And what does that mean? That means stories, right? That means exchanging ideas, concepts, things about your life. And so we've decided to have this event where we can, or we're going to have a production, but we're going to have this event with the New Haven Museum where we are collecting people's stories about the telephone or rather people's experiences with the telephone and how that has changed them in some way. And you're recording them? Yes, we are for posterity. And you've already done some recordings and they've told you what? Just give me a little snippet about what somebody said. Maybe about a rotary dial phone. <laughs> they have said um, things about how the telephone area in the home was a sacred little space where you could go and sort of like in, either it was an actual closet where you could go inside um, and a lot actually based on the operator or the person that they were talking to on the other end that would connect them to whoever, to whoever they were trying to reach. Let's talk about the history sure. of telephone in New Haven. Sure. Start from the beginning, Amy. Okay, well, briefly, Alexander Graham Bell at age 29 invented this phone in 1876. And in 1877, he was going on lectures and speaking tours about this new, you know, gadget he created. And he happened to be speaking in April of 1877 here in New Haven. And somebody in the audience was asked to help him with his demonstration, and it turned out to be the manager of the local telephone or tele, um, telegraph agency office. And from that demonstration, this person, George W. Coy, uh, decided he wanted to open a telephone business in New Haven, and he contacted Alexander Graham Bell to ask if he could have that franchise operation. And Alexander Graham Bell eventually agreed with his investors that Mr. Coy could have this franchise. But then Coy had to realize, okay, well, how's it going to work? And three things were needed. First, he needed to find out how to make this exchange contraption. How is he going to build it? What would it look like, this switchboard? Um, second, he needed investors. And third, they needed about $600 to make this it's all work. It's always about money. It's right? always about money. <laughs> but the great thing about New Haven is that we have this amazing history of inventions. And so Mr. Coy starts taking bits and pieces that he has in his house. So the handles for teapot lids. Um, carriage bolts and bustle wire aka corset wire and with all of these things he manages to build this eight line switchboard and um, he gets the investors he has two business partners and they officially open for business in january of 1878 and there we are the start of the telephone there industry in new haven now you've brought in some pictures that we're going to show some folks we're going to start with the first one which is um all about your show called the exchange and we have a couple of operators uh here which uh, this is a, su such a kitschy photo i, I love this <laughs> this was about 40s 1940s maybe 40s, 50s. somewhere in there yeah. let's go to the next one now this i love because this has got to be 1800s right amy yeah. where women of course were the operators the very first telephone operator in connecticut is from bridgeport and her name is marjorie gray um, and what's great is, and Jess can speak to this as well, um, originally teenage boys were in charge of the switchboard. Really? And, oh I yes. <laughs> Which is good and bad. Um, there's a story about one who, at the time when you connected a phone call, only two people could speak together. And he realized there was a backlog of people wanting to be connected to other people. And so he actually wets his fingers and becomes like a human like, um, tra like, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a connector of sorts. And it works out well for a bit, and then he does something stupid, and he gets, like, the shock of his life. And he decides that maybe it's not the best idea And this to happened do in that. New Haven. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, and so when they realized that they needed... Uh, 
nicer, clearer voices, people who are not going to make prank calls, people who are not going to disconnect a call. They, they look towards the women. Um, it of was, course they do. You know, right? it was seemed as a nice, reputable occupation to have. Um, and so after Marjorie is hired, they realize that they did a great job in finding her and they advertise for more female uh, workers. Which brings us to the next picture, um, you know, which is sort of a cartoon of, of that. Um, and women working the boards. <clears throat> How many women work the boards in New Haven over the years? Do we have any idea? Hundreds? Thousands? Hun thousands. Yeah. I mean, if you look at the entire history of it, uh, it's great because I have um, this story from a woman who came to visit and tour the museum. She told me that she worked at a switchboard when she was in high school. And the manager of the company said that she wouldn't get hired for two reasons. That she was left-handed and she was short. Because of the way you have to plug in the different lines and the height of the board. Um, but she got hired anyway and she worked there for about 20 years. And she said she had the time of her life. And just think what you heard over the years, yeah. you know, and, and people who met and maybe got married because they met the operator. Um, the next picture is the switchboard that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. This is just very simple. It is. It's a very uh, crude um, version, and unfortunately the original is lost. We have a reproduction of it in our exhibit at the museum. Um, but like I said, the, the flat, lo long metal pieces would be the, the, lit, the handles to the teapot lids. The bolts are the different connections, and then the wires are from the, the corsets. Which is amazing. Yeah. That's the first switchboard. Yeah. And then finally we come to the, uh, the phone book, which we don't <laughs> recognize anymore. But, there, you know, it's interesting how this went together. It is. Um, Mr. Coy sent out about a thousand circulars, so flyers. And inside, um, and they were mailed out, inside was a contract. And if you signed the contract, you would be a subscriber to the telephone. It was about $1.50 per month or $18 a year. Um, the first person to return the contract was uh, Reverend jo John W. Todd, and he was from, uh, lived on Church Street. And that building where he actually lived is now the Eli apartment building. Oh, my goodness. Yes. And then the very first business to subscribe to the telephone was the, fl the New Haven Flower Company, and they ordered five telephones. But what's funny is that each line would have about 10 to 12 subscribers. So it was like the ultimate party line. You never really, <laughs> you never really were sure if your phone was going to be for you or for somebody else. Oh, the party line. So many stories. So Jessica, when the exchange uh, takes place in the fall, this production, what will we see incorporating a lot of what Amy just told us? So. I think what we're doing is taking more of the ideology around the exchange um, and also taking these stories, so collecting these stories from people all over New Haven about their relationship with the phone, relationship to the idea of exchange, and then pulling those, I, I don't know, the concurrent themes that happen. Like we all have a story of what is the the scariest or the most intense thing you've ever heard on a telephone call? What is the saddest thing? There's a lot of themes that run. Just weaving the stories yes. through. Yes, and so pulling them all together into this mobile contraption that is going to travel to different places during citywide open studios and perform mostly out of doors. And uh, hopefully, in addition to that, people will be able to pick up a telephone and listen to the stories that we're collecting throughout the next six months. Now, let's say somebody can't come and see this. Are these stories all going to be recorded and kept somewhere? Um, we're working with Baobab Tree Studios, and they are archiving every single story we record with the New Haven Story Project. Oh, that's... And do you have to live in New Haven to tell a story? Is it... I don't pretty much think based so. on I mean, I so think much. that, you know, we're, we're really big in New Haven boosterism, so obviously if you're in New Haven, we like you best first. But anybody, <laughs> anybody, <laughs> New, Haven that, New Haven County, yeah. sure, yeah. I think I you mean, said we love New Haven hard. Yeah, we, we love New Haven is hard. Is what you said, so. which is awesome. <laughs> now, Amy brought in um, the telephone bulletin, and this is from the 1940s. Yes. And in this edition, um, there's all kinds of stuff, including one one picture here that I that I saw. I don't even know if we can get this, but um, here's a guy, I guess, fixing wires, and there's just thousands of wires there yes. um, back in the day. I don't know how you would sort all that stuff out. But what else was interesting about this particular issue, Amy? Um, this issue has uh, people who write letters to the telephone company basically saying, you know, dear editor of the newsletter, 
I want to commend you and praise your operator number 76 for successfully completing my phone call even when I didn't have the number and only the name of the person I was I wanted to talk to. She was pleasant, she was calm, she put up with all of my lack of knowledge about this person and you know I just wanted to thank you so very much and then they go on to say operator number 76 is Mrs. So and so and there's all kinds of letters so the public is basically writing to the telephone company's newsletter praising their operators. I love this. <laughs> and when we come to the New Haven Museum, what can we expect to see about the telephone? Um, so unfortunately, we don't have a lot of physical objects. We do have the, um, the model switchboard, but in our archive, we have a really interesting history of the telephone and how it impacted society. Uh, I was reading about how they constructed a line down to Lighthouse Point so that people could find out when and the ships would come in and dock. They mentioned the, 19, or the 1878 election. They, state, they put a phone in all the different wards and people could call and get the election returns. Um, and then they also put a phone at the U.S. Signal Service office in the weather observation room. So you could just pick up the phone and call and see what the temperature was, what the barometer is reading. So it's impacting your daily life, having this phone. You get more access to information. And this is just in 1878. And, and you know, we went from that to the rotary dial to... Mm -hmm. Let's say Snapchat. <laughs> right. I mean, we're we're in a total different yes. um, society now, and how we talk to each other and and text. Um, anything else that you want to tell us about what the exchange is going to be about? Um, the biggest thing I think that I can land on is that we want to hear from people about and how do they get a hold of you okay so they can come to the new haven museum um, we're having this event on the 18th march 18th. Uh, march 18th from one to four and they can come oh, let me just write that down <laughs> march 18th okay. uh, march 18th um, from one to four and they can come and share with us their story about connection about their first telephone about maybe you were a telephone operator maybe you were a telephone lineman yeah, awesome. anything like just we want to collect it it it's such an intentional thing that we're doing this time around. Every time Broken Umbrella's done something, we have sort of haphazardly, accidentally, people from the New Haven community come out of the woodwork and say, oh, my aunt worked there, or, oh, I know that story, or you're in the old Horowitz Brothers building, that's amazing. Now we're saying, wait a minute, we know that people are out there that want to tell oh, stories, absolutely. and we want to incorporate them into our production. So we're hoping to create, by nature, a larger exchange through our actual production of exchange. And how many <laughs> names did we go through with the telephone company in New Haven? <laughs> oh my lord, okay, so it starts out as the New Haven District Telephone Company, and then it becomes the Connecticut Telephone Company, and then in 1882 you get the Southern New England Telephone, and what, a few years ago became Frontier. And there you so have So there you go. <laughs> Amy, Jessica, thank you so much for letting us go down history with the telephone. And uh, I hope it goes great this fall. And thanks for all of your knowledge. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Spend all night kissing and it was right here, then who else is missing? Got a little sidetrack to find my solution. I'm the keys of the door, but it's also a metaphor. Keep to keep going to the grocery store of a mind. Just the same time, skip right ahead to the last ride.